that peace or finding that sense of that's okay that that happened uh, is what's the most important for me. And is it, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with what you're saying 100%. You have to learn the lesson mm-hmm. at hand and not live off of the regret because, you know, I often think to myself, you can't compare yourself, you can't compare the you that you are now to someone you could have potentially become if you were never that person. That person never existed, only in your brain, right? Um, Absolutely, yeah. It's like, it's like we're always, we're more um, depressed sometimes by, or or saddened by things that are not even true and things we come up with in our mind rather than what actually happened, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I have so many regrets, but then like when you get to that state of seeing things differently, you no longer see them as regret. You see them as lessons. Um, Absolutely. You know, so many things that could have gone different. Do you have any concrete examples of anything you may have at one point regretted and decided to look at it from a different perspective? Um, I think, I mean, it's, it's easy to sort of simple things where it's like you're, you're in a fight with either your partner or your parents. I, I don't have one concrete example that I'm like, damn, I wish I did this or I wish I didn't do that. Um, but like, I mean, even when you're just in a fight with, with my, my partner or my, my parents, whatever it may be, it's like, if you take that time to sort of look back on what it was really about and you break down every single portion of what was causing you to get angry or what was causing you that frustration, it really ends up being nothing. Like in 99% of the time, it's just, it's really nothing. And the scale of everything, it's, it's so small. Um, actually, I mean, it, one coming to my head now is uh, getting into a fight with my, my past coach at a time where, you know, things aren't going well, you're not playing, uh, you're not in the 18. And for example, for me, I wasn't in the 11 where I thought I deserved to be. Um, and sort of we went and had a little uh, sort of snap at each other, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, in the 11, the following week, and then sort of looking back and being like, okay, why was I so um, worked up about that one game? Why did I do this? Why did I say these things? What? And I, I sort of regretted doing that. And then it learned from the next time that he necessarily didn't put me in the 11 that, okay, well, the last time you got upset you regretted that so sort of put into perspective that it wasn't necessarily worth it obviously these are little small examples that um on a smaller scale people definitely have have bigger things to bigger fish to fry when it comes to certain things like that but yeah that's sort of one one example that's come to mind immediately um for me and that sort of uh, was unnecessary at the time and looking back on it now it's, it's interesting you say that because, like, I, I know you, we've known each other for a long time, and I know that you're really mm-hmm. professional on and off the field. Um, so even if someone like you, for example, can these things happen to even people like you, it, it's good for people to see that and, you know, and realize that they weren't the only ones going through these tough times, even if they're successful or not. If they're Absolutely, yeah. Help, help them move forward, right? Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's, what's interesting, too, is that I feel like life will show you well, possibly, you know, I've recently had a conversation with a few friends and we were talking about how life doesn't do things. It doesn't do things at you. It does things for you, even if the most negative things. And mm-hmm. until you learn the lesson that's trying to be shown to you by whatever energy is at play, you're going to keep going through the same experience until you decide, no, wait, this is a lesson. I got to go with the other way. Does mm-hmm. that resonate with Absolutely. you? Yeah, of course. I think that's a, that's a really good sort of thing to, to live by and so that night for sure absolutely yeah i 100 percent agree with that good good um another question i wanted to ask you this is interesting because i started contemplating with the idea recently and obviously mm-hmm. we live we all live our lives through our own perception and perspectives are really interesting in this case do you think that there's a way that you are being perceived that is not indicative of who you are um yeah, I mean, I think I think it's it's another example is or sure another thing is it's person by person, right? You may see me as, as someone or know me as someone um, who's kind, generous, funny, whatever it may be, and then I go down the road and I meet that person, they think I'm a dick or a mean guy or not generous or complete opposite, right? So I think I think there are certain people that definitely will perceive you different ways, and I. And it's okay. You just have to be okay with not worrying about everyone in 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 that 
sort of phase where they may not see you as you want to be seen, you know, and, and that sort of even comes in back into not even just like professional sports, but like life, you know, anyone on the street can think, Oh, he has blonde hair. He's got tattoos. Well, he's a douchebag, you know? And, and, and I'm sure they, there are people who think that, but it's, it's finding that balance of not, not not caring but just letting those people that don't necessarily mean anything or actually change your life affect you in a negative way because then if they affect you in a negative way in your life then it just everything around you crumbles from nothing you know and you have to worry about the people that actually mean something to you that actually you can take their opinion like listen you're doing this or you're doing this and sort of learn from them or hear them out as opposed to uh, worrying about everyone who may perceive you in a negative way and uh and it obviously translates into professional sports where it's like i'm sure you know if a coach likes you here but doesn't like you there or this coach doesn't want you and this coach wants you it's very similar um in sort of the way they can look at you and the way they feel um but you're okay you can be okay with the guy who doesn't like you as long as you have some sort of stability in the person that does and you can hear what they have to say and you take that with more importance than what the other person says you take the pieces from someone who may not perceive you as the way you want to be seen but then you also translate that into positivity and working with that person who perceives you in the light you want to be shown very interesting this is a good perspective mm -hmm good way of looking at it definitely um mm -hmm. it's interesting you mentioned the whole the blonde hair the tattoos i mean i feel like it's a there is a stigma obviously and today it, it, i think it's more there's a more open community but if you go maybe 20 years back it was completely different i mean even today soccer other soccer players or athletes are saying oh i don't need to be active on social media or i don't need to have tattoos or to do my craft mm -hmm. and and you realize that you're being judged and and we're all culprits and we're all of this of the same reality like i for example i know i'm a judgmental person because that's i think that's how you choose your friendships you choose your partners you choose anything you do in life is a judgment right you look at something you say mm -hmm. okay you get a sense of it and then you move forward with whatever whatever it is you're doing um but yeah and then you you mentioned a little bit you take the criticisms or or concern comments for whatever they are positive or negative from the people that you actually interact with or you consider important in your life are these people referred to are they more like guides are they friends they can be yeah they can, they can be guides it can be someone you look up to it doesn't necessarily have to be someone who's really close to you in your life it could be really anyone um someone you respect i think is the biggest part and someone you can know is going to tell you the truth i think those don't those can be uh most important they don't necessarily have to be a friend as long as you have some sort of um respect for them and you can understand that and and hear them out i think that's the most important thing and not necessarily a friend what about now that you you know you're taking criticisms from everyone around your community what about the toughest critic yourself do you consistently criticize yourself are you someone who doesn't criticize yourself at all you just like to live life without thinking about these things oh absolutely i think the hardest person on me is myself um no matter what I do, whether it be in a match or working out or whatever it is, I just don't think I'm doing enough or I have to be better. And I think that's that should be something I think everyone, uh, especially in the professional sports world, has to sort of live with. Because if, you, if you're satisfied at one point, that's where you'll never get better, right? So if you're constantly sort of critiquing yourself and, and, and trying to find things to be better at, then I think that's only beneficial to you. Um, with that being said, you can't be completely hard on yourself or only hard on yourself, I should say. You also have to find a balance where you can also um, give yourself some sort of praise or reward in a sense uh, so you can understand that these things are good. But then also, not un not just that, you also have to find that balance because that's where things can be problematic, just like a bit of both, right? So if you're watching a match back and you think you did something good, let's say, okay, you point that out, you can clip that or whatever. And you say, okay, I did that well, but then you should also find, okay, well, I didn't do anything. Cause if you end the match, I'm bringing this to the soccer, but if you end the match where you're analyzing a game where you have only positive clips, well, you're doing something wrong. And if you don't see anything that you've done wrong, well, I can guarantee there's someone out there who will be like, you did this, this, and this. So uh, I think you just have to find that balance with yourself when, when working with yourself. And you, you mentioned, um, you mentioned that you keep, you also say the positive things to yourself, and that's important because I was going to ask you, what do you do? What kind of thoughts do you go through that keep you positive and keep you um, motivated in the sense that it reminds you that you're doing things well? And I guess you said with sports, you 
watch highlight tapes and you say, hey, mm -hmm. I did this well, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's, it's, it's much easier for a person like myself or anyone um, playing sports that are televised or recorded because it's an objective thing, right? You can see, okay, oh, I did this good and this bad. Um, as opposed to just in life in general, where you're walking down the street, you make a decision. It's really hard to be objective with one thing or another. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's just a tough thing to, to sort of deal with. You know, what's interesting though, is that all these ideas we have about ourselves are, um, they're kind of results of all of our experiences, right? Like mm -hmm. We're conditioned by our environment. So when you play soccer based on where you've grown up playing, what you've seen, you know, everything you've ever sensed. And, and even though it's, it is part of who you are. It's also because you were conditioned that way. You know, I was listening to uh, Jordan Peterson recently, and I'm, I think you know who he is. And he was mm -hmm. saying that we have that conversation we have with ourselves in our mind is basically different versions of ourselves that have seen things differently, and they're telling you one thing, and this person's telling you another thing, and then you formulate an idea based off what everyone says inside your head, and they're all different people. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of weird because then you wonder, okay, if I'm if I'm conditioned by all these ideas, then who am I actually? Which leads me to ask you my next question is, I, I mean, I judge, try to judge myself when I'm alone. So I would ask you, who are you when you are alone? I mean, not in the sense that you are a soccer player and whatnot, but who are you? <laughs> That's a deep question. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. I, um, I've never been really stumped like doing an interview, but yeah, I've definitely been stumped. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's I, the first thought that comes to my mind is soccer player. Right. But I mean, that's just, just from what I do. I, yeah, that's honestly, you know, what? I'd, I'd love to come back and answer that question after some real thought, because I think that's one of the toughest things I've ever had to, to think about. And, and obviously it's not going to be easy to answer just, you know, now in one conversation but it's something that gets I know it's gotten me thinking before because you would, all these things you define yourselves by like oh I play football or uh, I write or whatever I do these are all things mm -hmm. you do or ways you act but there's I think you, you this is going to get a little deep here but the things that we use this body that we have that we were given to do things but it doesn't necessarily define the person that's inside of it like one day you're going to give this mm -hmm. body back and then what do you take with you right obviously these are the really deep tough questions and, and uh, I guess I had a question lined up for you. It was along the lines of like, if you woke up in a different body, who would you be? Would you be the same? Would you still be happy? Would you find that state of mind? Yeah, yeah that's a tough one. I, I don't know, right? It's, it's um, maybe, yeah, maybe. Um, wow, yeah, it, it, that's a tough one, right? I, I, it's hard to sort of put into perspective or even sort of think of if that's if a possibility, but I mean, yeah, you know what? I, I it very well could be uh, in another world or another um, sort of realm of possibilities. And yeah, I, I I feel like there are other things that I could definitely do that would make me happy. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> man, these are tough questions. They're, they're not easy. I'll tell you that. No, I know, and I didn't mean to stump you. It's just that when I was no, no, absolutely, no, and I I really appreciate that. That's the thing, because long after this interview, I'll definitely think of them and then and and sort of maybe even have a better answer you next time i come on or next time i talk to you but yeah that's, those are tough questions definitely tough questions yeah like it, it's it's not that like i said like i don't want to stump you it's just that people that do you know they deal with things mentally inside of them and they're trying to fight their way out or figure things out often they're asking these deep questions and they look for other people to see where they they stumble and fall and and so it's good to know that other people like that like professional footballers or anyone else out there that's yeah that's i don't know yeah i'm in i'm in the boat with them yeah i'm in the same boat as them i don't i, I don't know <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that, that's interesting no i just I, i'm glad that you have um you, you obviously seem like you, you're you're in a happy place you know you're enlightened you went through mm -hmm. a lot so it's interesting to see how you've gotten from you know tfc academy or i think you played on spartacus for a little bit even when you were younger mm -hmm. i believe that's what you met um and now you're at a professional level and you're still, you're still dealing with things, right? Like the way the rest of us Absolutely, are. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. But, uh, but yeah, no, Chris, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. And next time we'll, we'll touch base on a little bit more on the soccer side of things. And, you know, we'll talk again Absolutely, and I'll yeah. ask you some questions. We'll do a game and, you know, there's endless possibilities of where we're going to take this. 
Uh, but Sounds thanks for good. being on. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. We'll talk soon, Chris. Yeah, sounds good. All right, take care. Take care.